All right, let's jump into more of these circles in section one four. They're gonna get a little trickier. So again, we're gonna draw pictures and not immediately jump into formulas. Um, see what we can figure out. So we have, we wanna find the equation of a circle that has endpoints of a diameter. So uh, let me plot those points and then remind you what diameter is. So negative one and four and then three and eight. Oops, I'm, I need more room for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Okay, three and eight, negative one and four. And if these are on the edge of the circle. A diameter, remember, goes all the way across and the center is in the middle and it makes a circle. So, to find the equation, right, we need r, we don't know r, and we need the center, which is h and k. So we know neither of those. So we need the radius and we need the center. So we could find both of those. I think I'm going to find the center first, because visually, wouldn't the center be the midpoint? Of the diameter? And we just recently learned that midpoint formula. So that'll be really easy. So the midpoint from last time was x1 plus x2, right? We averaged them out. We're basically finding halfway in between the x values all over two. And then we're averaging out the y values again, because we're finding halfway. So in this example, x1 is negative one, x2 is three, all over two. And then for y, we get four and eight, four plus eight over two. So what do we get? Negative one plus three, negative two over two, which is negative one. And then we get 12 over two, which is six. I messed up some more. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Positive two, right? Negative one plus three is positive two. Two over two is one. And then we get 12 over two is six. So one and six, yeah, that makes sense with the picture, right? It's not perfectly to scale. But the center would be one six. So that would be my H and my K. So we're actually almost there. So we found those. Um, and now we need the radius. Hmm. So I think to find the radius, we could just find one of these distances, right? If we found the distance between the radius and a point, we could find the radius. Um, we could also find the radi the distance between, oops, between these two points and divide by two. Uh, but since we have the center, we might as well just immediately do that. So we'll do the distance from the center, which is one six, two, and then you could do either one of the points. I'm gonna do three eight, just no reason. You'll get the same answer either way. So distance is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared, right? Formulas I'll write down quick, right? You can reference them. And we'll plug in. So we'll say x2 is 3 and x1 is 1. So 3 minus 1 squared y2 is 8, y1 is 6 squared. So what do we get? We get 2 squared plus 2 squared. So we get the square root of 4 plus 4, square root of 8. That's my radius. Um, I will simplify it, though. So 8 is 4 times 2. So square root of 4 times square root of 2. So the radius is 2 root 2. If you had used the other point, you would actually get the same radius. So let's go back to what we were doing. Um, so we found the radius. And so the final thing was just find the equation. So we'll just plug all that in. So the equation. So 2 root 2 squared equals x minus 1 for the center, right? 
my center was 1, 6. And then plus y minus 6 squared. And then 2 root 2 squared was 8, because it was the square root of 8. Or it could be 2 squared is 4, root 2 is 2, so 8. And there's our equation. We can leave it in this form. Cool. Let's try one more on this video. These are a little on the long side. But notice the picture. It does help a lot. So let's do one more. Um, so let's find a circle. Find the equation of a circle again. Um, this time we know the center and we know one of the outside points. So let's see. We have 4, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is the center of the circle. And then it also goes through, the outside of the circle goes through 7, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Sorry, 7 to get 3. 1, 2, 3. So it'll probably look something like that, right? It's not perfect. So we already know the center. So if we do r squared, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. We actually already know most of the formula. x minus 4 squared plus y minus negative 5 squared. Or y plus 5 if you prefer. So let's go and find the radius, just like the previous example. So we'll just try that distance formula, right? If the distance, the distance formula will tell us how big the radius is. That's my dog in the background, I'm sorry. Shh. Um, so we'll find the distance from the center, which is four negative five, to the point of seven negative three to find the radius. So if you're feeling confident after the previous one, why don't you guys go ahead and try this? Otherwise, we'll use the distance formula one more time. All right, notice all these problems, I'm kind of like coming up with a plan rather than immediately starting. So come up with a plan. So if you feel confident, pause it and try it. Otherwise, here we go. So x2 can be seven, x1 can be four. So seven minus four squared. Negative 3 minus negative 5 for the y's, minus negative 5 squared. So what do we get? We get 3 squared plus uh, 2 squared. So what's that? 9 plus 4. So we get a weird radius. 9 plus 4 is what? 13. So square root of 13 is my radius. And so we'll just plug in. We know everything already. So r squared would be 13. And so our formula will be 13 equals x minus 4 squared plus y plus 5 squared. That's our equation. So come up with a plan. Don't just start plugging things in. That's where most mistakes are. Is we see a formula, we just want to start plugging numbers in. Draw a picture, make some plans. So. I'll see you in the next video for one, four.